the gang's all here. No. <laughs> Looks like everyone's starting to come back. All right, so it looks like everybody's back. We did our icebreakers. I hope you guys got the opportunity. Stop myself. I'm actively trying to use gender neutral language. Um, you all, everyone, is um, had the opportunity to get to know the folks that they're going to be able to talk to for the rest of this um, session. And so I hope some great things came out of that. If anyone was wondering what book changed my life, it's always a mix up between James Baldwin, A Fire Next Time, and uh, Paolo Fieri's Pedagogy of the Oppressed. So if you've never read either of those, those are two incredible books, and both have equally changed my life. Um, James Baldwin would definitely be my imaginary friend. And if you could live anywhere in the world for a year, where would it be? Oh, Cape Town, South Africa, hands down. Um, okay, let's get it going. And so um, I always like to reorient us in the fact that anti-racism is a way of life, it is a choice, and we are always actively going to have to do it. You never become anti-racist. We actively are anti-racist in our everyday lives and it has to be a concerted effort. And so non-racist is not enough. That's why we call this series, I'm not racist, I'm anti-racism versus I'm not racist. Um, and then we always wanna orient ourselves in that, that we should be in it for the long haul. 400 years of oppression is not going to change in two weeks. And so we have to think of innovative ways in which to in, ingrain ourselves in this ideology of anti-racism. And so let's keep trucking along. Um, and so let's come to a common understanding of what anti-racism is. I think that that helps us move forward in a space um, of clarity and understanding. And so an anti-racist is defined as the work of actively oppressing racism by advocating for changes in political, economic, and social life. So there are various different definitions out there of what it means to be an anti-racist. And in these sessions, we're trying to figure out what it means for each of us to be anti-racist and so that we can be mindful of how we're walking around in the world. This particular event um, is about performative activism. And so we're gonna take a second um, before I define it, giving you the opportunity to um, define it for yourselves. And so there's a link coming in the chat that is to a Padlet where right on the screen, it will pop up for you um, the things that you believe that anti-racism is. So if you click on that link, it'll take you into a new browser. If you're on your phone, it might be a little bit difficult, but I'm sure you can handle it. Um, and you can just type in, you press this add button down here um, and you can type in what you believe performative activism to be. Um, so I want to think about what all of you think that it is uh, before we get into and start actually defining it. So I'll give everybody about a minute um, to do that. Being involved when it's convenient for you. I love that. Only showing activism. Yeah. Cloutism. I like that. doing it for show. You can also put examples of performative activism in there. Only when it benefits your image, yes. Only showing activism when it's trending. The black box on IG, black square, and that's it. Yeah, so we're not saying anything was wrong with the black square, but if that's all that you did, love it, love it, love it. I'm gonna give about 10 more seconds to finish your thought. Yeah, only when it benefits your image. Putting on a spectacle of being woke or socially conscious, but not actually doing the work. Reposting social justice infographics that are, that you actually, <laughs> that you actually haven't read. I love that. Um, Absolutely, we don't wanna share information that we don't, we haven't even read. 
Um, the third slide on whatever infographic you post could be something ridiculous and outlandish. So I love that. I never even thought of it. So that is awesome that that was bring one MLK quote. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. Um, so let's, let's move on from this. I love all of these. These are great. Um, and really important. And I think that we already have a common understanding of what um, performative activism is just from, from doing that. And so um, now we're going to define it um, from, oh yeah, it pops right up on there, beautiful. Um, so let's talk about what activism is first before we go into performative activism. It's using vigorous campaigning to bring about social um, or political change. And so that can happen in various different ways. And we've talked about that through the session. So if this is your first one, our first session was just, we were figuring out how we were feeling about the fact that the world blew up because it was in the middle of the protests and all of those sorts of things. We were, we were all in here trying to figure out how we even felt and what we wanted to do moving forward. And then we talked about what now. We talked about the fact that activism takes a really long time. The Montgomery bus boycotts, those were over a year of um, people living in Montgomery deciding that they were, they were gonna walk to work, which was miles and miles every day, or carpool to work instead of taking the Montgomery buses. So it was a long time, a lot of, ac um, a lot of action. And activism happens in various different ways. It happens on social media because we have it now. It happens in our newspapers. It happens on in our classrooms. It happens in various different places. And so we want to make sure that we're understanding that activism is a very, very broad term. Now we're going to bring it down to performative activism and what that is. Um, so performative activism is a term referring to activism done to increase one's social capital. Right, so when someone's being when someone's being a, a performative activist, there it's more for personal gain rather than it is for systemic and social change, um, and it typically relates to a tweet and a post and a form of social media or wearing a BLM uh, shirt and not doing anything after that. And so, what we really want to clarify in this moment is that performative activism is also activism. It is also necessary in the sorts of changes that we're trying to make in the world. So I don't want us to deem demonize folks who are only using social media at this point because they might not know another way. They might not know something else to do. So we don't want to demonize anybody who uses their social media as their form of activism. We just want to collectively be working together to figure out what can we do after that because there's always something more that we can do in each of our lives. No matter who we are, where we come from, we can, we can make changes. And I think that in this moment, a lot of people feel um, and some of you have expressed, those of you who have been here before, the feeling of it's not enough. I've done position, I've done petitions, I've I've done, I vote, I do all these things, I don't know what else to do, I don't see the changes happening. I, it's overwhelming, right? And so starting with social media is absolutely incredible. I run a social media page that's Black on Black Education, where we put a whole bunch of things out on social media. So part of the work that I do is performative, but then we all are taking it a step forward by saying that we're going to spend our Wednesday night together talking about activism and how to move forward. So let's talk about some examples. Um, the Blackout Tuesday, you guys already did that. Um, the Black Lives Matter painted on the street. Now I cannot lie to you, it brings me great joy to know that Donald Trump has to walk outside of the White House and see Black Lives Matter in big yellow letters every day. Like it brings me joy. I, I, it definitely does. Um, but it is a performative statement that is beautiful and, and creative and necessary for the movement forward. Because again, Trump has to see it every day. Um, but we are not going to stop there, right? So we don't want DC to just put Black Lives Matter on the ground and then that's it. We want systemic change in the police department, in government, in all of the other education, all of the other social and political areas of our lives. We want to see change there as well. So we're talking about performative activism as something that should be in tandem with other forms of activism and not the sole way that we advocate for change. Um, we also want to talk a tiny bit about brand activism and the fact that we've seen tons of brands. Netflix is just the one that we use as an example. I still use Netflix. They're not canceled yet. Um, but the, if you say to be silent, it's to be complicit, Black Lives Matter, boom, 
I want to know what comes after that. What are you doing, Netflix, with the millions of dollars that millions and millions and millions of people are paying you every month to use your streaming service? I don't want just an email or a tweet. There has to be something after that to make it not only performative, but what is necessary to create the systemic change. And so, um, we talked about this. These are just a few of the brands that have um, spoken out in support of Black Lives Matter. Um, Sephora, Amazon, NFL, Black uh, Bank of America, L'Oreal, Twitter. So these different places, Amazon, well, are we gonna start paying our workers more money? It's just a question. I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering. Um, Sephora, are we going to make sure that we have foundation for women who look like me or hair products for women who look like me. Um, I, I like, these are things that are part of creating the systemic change that we have to see in the world. NFL, are your players allowed to kneel? I, I'm just wondering. And so if you were going to put out um, statements of standing in support with Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter is not just asking that you like Black people, they're also asking that we create systemic change within our policy so that Black people can live in this country to the same uh, standard that has been set for those who have lived here for, considering they have lived here for just as much time as any other population of people on this country. We should be treated the same and shouldn't have policies that disproportionately affect um, my people. Um, yeah, so we're going to check out for these brands and make sure that they're doing what they say that they're doing. And so we want to talk about the pros and cons because we've already discussed the fact that performative activism is not all bad. It is not a negative thing. We're not going to make people feel bad because they're using their social media to advocate. Um, so some of the cons are that there's no tangible action. Once you put the post up, you don't know who's actually going to read it, who's going to click through it, who's actually using it for um, educating themselves. There is, there's echo chambers, right? So if you're someone who is posting about Black Lives Matter, it is more likely that the people who follow you already support those sort of beliefs and those sort of ideologies. And so sometimes we get bogged down with the same people talking to each other about the same things and we're not kind of moving outside of that. Um, sometimes it's viewed as a trend, right? So um, we, our social media pages, like, let me just get a hands up, something to show me, like how many people's social media chain, uh, pages look extraordinarily different than they did approximately three, four or five weeks ago. Cause mine definitely looks a lot different. People are going back to normal. Uh, like thing, we don't have BLM posts on everything. Now I can say some of my friends who are on here right now are still rocking with us. Love you all. Um, and so yeah, those are some of the cons. And then some of the pros is that it's accessible, right? I at least feel like I'm doing something, which is absolutely important because some people who are activists, you get tired. You get tired of, of protesting and doing all of the other forms of activism, right? And so sometimes this is something that's accessible, it's easy, and it's something that I can do that I feel like in this moment, one, makes people understand that these are where my views are, and then those who didn't know about something that I posted, now they do have a little bit more knowledge or just a little bit of flicker of understanding of something that they didn't have before. Building communities, right? Social media is, has done an incredible job of allowing people who live in different parts the world to connect with one another. Um, there's inclusivity in that. that there, every type of identity marker that exists is on social media in some facet and in some way. And so again, coming back to that, being able to create community and connect, it's an entryway, it's a start. Um, there's so much money. There were, there were places in, in Minneapolis that were saying, please stop sending us money because that is how much people were donating based off of, of the visibility on social media. Um, and so I'm sure there are a whole lot of other places that needed money, but that was how much social media was, was making sure that folks were, were being cared for and the things that needed to be happening in that particular moment were happening. Um, and so we're gonna keep pushing forward. Um, so now we have gone through the beginning of the session where we try to lay the groundwork of the thing in which we are talking about. And now we're gonna go into breakout rooms. And so in those breakout rooms, we want you to take the 10 minutes 
to be open and to be honest with one another. And I know it's not an easy ask to be open and honest with people who you don't know. Um, but this is, is, it's a low stakes conversation. I think anyone who decided to spend their Wednesday night on a call like this is ready and willing for this open dialogue. And so we just want to make a note to be super respectful towards anyone in exchange and dialogue. If someone says something that you don't enjoy, there's like, there's space for, hey, like, let's talk about that rather than I now don't like you and we're angry on Zoom. We're just gonna like get to know one another, talk through these sorts of things. And so let's, let me tell you what the first breakout group is. Yeah, I'm gonna tell, like, there we go. <laughs> so um, for anyone who is looking for reading material that, um, for this book specifically, specifically excuse me, specifically for white folks. That's who this book was written for. Um, white for Jilly was written by Robin D'Angelo. I've read it. It is fantastic. Um, and it's called White Fragility. And in the book, she poses this question to the readers. She asks, am I actively seeking to interrupt racism? Do I want to be? Like, these are just like, and, and I think the question is like, yes, I'm on this call. Of course I want to be. But do you really? Right? Like we're at, we have to really start to ask ourselves, like, do I really want to do that thing? Because if I really want to do that thing, then I need help to figure out how I'm going to do it and in what ways I'm going to do it. So in this breakout group, I'm going to send you out in 10 minutes and give you the opportunity to discuss with one another, are you actively seeking to interrupt racism as you exist right now before you came on this call? And then thinking about if I really want to be, what are the other things that I can be doing? And I think we've had this sort of talk before. So I'm going to give you the next 10 minutes to go back into those breakout groups and discuss this and think about this. And when you come back, I want everyone to kind of share, well, not everyone, but I want folks to have the opportunity to share with one another um, what happened in those groups. Because I think we sometimes go out in our groups and you guys have great conversations, but then the whole group doesn't get to hear um, what was happening in other people's groups. So I just want to put that purview that I am going to ask that. So as you go into those groups, think about the fact that I'm going to ask for people to come off mute to share with the whole group. Um, and so here come those breakout groups right now. I might pop into yours, um, but here you go. Okay. Um, all right, so what happened? How did, how, what, what were we talking about in our groups? I, I definitely wanna know. We had an extraordinarily great conversation in the group that I popped into. So um, I wanna give folks the opportunity to hop off mute and, and share their thoughts about um, those of us who are in here, are we actively seeking to interrupt racism? <laughs> I wanna hear about it. Uh, can should I say something? Yeah. Okay. I would say uh, this is just short, but basically lead by example for number one, because I'm involved in a lot of things because I work for two universities and LA Unified, but I'm also on like the neighborhood council. Uh, so uh, therefore I'm a, uh, letting them, I, I'm a, C contributing in an individual way and saying that this is something that has touched social race, racial justice and the inequalities of everyone and they need to be a part of it and not just you know act like it's something that's happening outside of them so mm. I'm uh, bringing it up whenever I can and anything that I'm a part of and I I'm usually a part of something that has a great number of people mm. thank you thank you I think that's really important, right? Um, leading by example is something that we ask students to do. We ask kids to do. We ask, like, we ask this of um, those who, in our last session, we talked about power and privilege, those who we are either companions with or that we have power over. So if you're a teacher, you ask this of your students. If you're a parent, you ask this of your children. And so sometimes we ask things of others that we aren't necessarily doing ourselves. Um, and so I think that that's super important, um, that, that factor of leading by example and getting involved. Um, getting involved is definitely a huge one as well. Um, so yeah, I, we have time for two or th two more people to come off mute and share what you talked about in your small group. Uh, my group talked about how um, difficult it is calling out racism because um, a lot of people 
you know, cringe at the word and are like, how dare you call me racist? And what was interesting was someone mentioned um, how some progressive people are racist as well. And I mean, of course, and um, when you call them out or, you know, mention it to them, whatever, um, they get up in arms and they're like, but don't you know, like, you know, my voting history, X, Y, and Z. And it's like that not always um, kind of transfers to current conversations or um, actions. And so that was, that was an interesting conversation as well. I, yes, absolutely. I love, I love that. Um, I think something I think about often is the fact that there can be racism with no white people. There can be racism with no, um, there, like there doesn't have to be a white person in a system at all for it to be racist, for it to disproportionately affect certain groups of people. Um, and so I think that that's extraordinarily important. And this idea of how difficult it is to call out racism has consistently come up in all three of these sessions. And I can't lie and say I am a pro at doing it. Um, and so that is why we haven't had the session yet, but I think that it must be the next one um, because it has come up in literally every single one of these sessions. Um, so yes, what else did we talk about in those groups? I, I We have time for one more person. I guess, um... I'll say, I'll say something. Um, one thing that was talked about, about again, what I'm going to do with um, seeking to interrupt racism is when Eva, you talked about expectations of these big companies and corporations specifically about me as a consumer, I can ask these corporations to do more than just give us a blanket statement, but also what am I going to do with my money if it doesn't happen? specifically and one of those brands that um i don't remember if it was up there or not but specifically with makeup brands i know it's so easy for me to walk into you know a cvs and pick up you know a foundation that matches me no problem yet all of the darker sh shades are online only like why are you doing that can we hold you accountable for that in other ways another one is like fashion nova that appropriates black culture all the time okay, you say you made a couple of statements, what are you actually doing with that? And what am I going to do with that? You know, am I just gonna let them get away with it? You know, for the sake of not canceling a brand, you know, things like that. So we talked about that a little bit. Absolutely, absolutely. And so I think that's something that we got from just those, th those three uh, people who came out off mute and shared, and I wanna thank you for that, is that there are so many different ways to actively interrupt racism, right? With our dollar, um, with our voices, with the groups that we decide to join, um, with our choice to say something or not say something when racism happens around us. There are so many different ways to do that. And I'm so glad that there was a variety of ways that people had the conversation about it. I have not shopped at Amazon, Walmart, and Fashion Nova is my newest one that I've canceled. Um, and Amazon has been like four or five years at this point. It is definitely hard. Uh, I am not gonna lie. And then it's, you'll find out that somewhere else that you shop is like run through Amazon somehow. And you're just like, how? I don't understand. Um, so it's definitely like, it is not an easy thing, but I think actively deciding that you're gonna do one, like a thing here, a thing there, it does start to shift the tide. The NFL had, they had to do something. They had to figure it out because when the, everything happened with Colin Kaepernick, people stopped watching and they got scared. And so I think as consumers, sometimes we feel so much smaller than these giant corporations but the giant corporations are only giant because we make them giant. So we have a lot more. Yep, Whole Foods is run by Amazon. I do not go there either. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, there is like, it's just so, it, it's difficult to know how this all works. And I think that coming into spaces like this and people hearing that, someone else in this group definitely didn't know that Amazon owns Whole Foods and, and, and may, make, a different, make a different choice just because they heard that. So I think that that's the importance of these spaces. And so we're gonna get ready for our next breakout group um, where we're gonna talk about, well, social media is there. 
why we, we should use it like it's there it's for it's there for us so we should use it um and so i want you to go into those groups and talk about how social media can be positively used to create social and systemic change and kind of create a plan for yourself if you have a notebook with you or your phone or something like that set some notes from yourself about a plan that you're going to uh, make and a commitment that you're going to make to yourself to use social media to affect systemic change um and it, it could be something as small as continuing to post and it can be something bigger that is creating a Facebook group or um, using Google Hangout to hold a meeting to, to watch a movie together. Like there's so many different ways that you can use social media um, to create that change. And so I wanna give folks the opportunity um, to, to talk about that. And I just put the question in the chat so you don't lose it. Um, and those breakout groups are coming now. And don't forget, I'm gonna ask two to three people to come off the mute when you come back. Enjoy. Welcome back. Let's give a second for everyone to come in. Uh, that was a good one. That was a good one for sure. <laughs> that was definitely a good one. So uh, like I said, I, I promised you I would give the opportunity for folks to share full group. Um, hopefully some different people than shared full group last time. Um, but it, yeah, I definitely want to know uh, what other people were talking about because our conversation was really, really great. I'd like to share something. Um, so uh, something we talked about is like the creativity used um, on a lot of these like, you know, Instagram posts and Twitter posts um, where, you know, it kind of breaks down information in a different way than, you know, mainstream media might like, you know, something like defunding the police or like why these people are protesting, you know, something that, you know, a lot of like closed mindset people may not understand unless it's presented in a different way. I think these creative posts and, you know, explaining it a different way are super helpful and positive because, you know, if one person sees it differently, then, you know, it kind of makes all of it worth it. And, you know, even if, the majority of the people who share it, you know, they're not signing these petitions, they're not donating, but if they can, you know, point someone in the direction who can, then, you know, that kind of makes it all worth it and they're doing their part. And, you know, if everyone does that, then, you know, we all as a group collectively do better, I guess. Absolutely. Thank you. And I was in that group. And so we, um, we talked about a lot of things um, and I was taking notes because they were really great things that I definitely wanted to add full group. Um, we talked about like having a healthy mindset around activism, um, the difference between feeling guilty for feeling like you're not doing enough or there's not like there's like I'm just not doing what I'm supposed to be doing or I'm, I could be doing better. Um, we all could always be doing better. Like at, like Barack Obama, wherever he's sitting right now, there's something that he could be doing to like be doing better, right? And so if we all think that way, we'll never be satisfied with anything. And so I think the there's a, there's a big difference between like feeling guilt around um, not doing enough in our minds and actively having a, a mindset of I'll do better tomorrow or I'll be better tomorrow. And if I'm not better tomorrow, then I'll be better the day after that. Um, because there is, there's fatigue, we get tired. Um, I also loved, we talked about the talking points that were given on social media. So I talked about the fact that like, sometimes I can be aggressive. I come off abrasive. Like I'm not always, I don't always say the things the right way or the kindest way or the nicest way. That's not my authentic self. And so social media has given me a lot of talking points and analogies and things that when I am talking with people who don't necessarily agree with me or that I'm trying to kind of um, think, make think in a different way, um, social media has given me a lot of analogies and ways of thinking that I haven't necessarily like thought of on my own. Um, and then also we talked about um, how easy it is to support like support anti-racism simply by supporting black owned businesses, simply by changing, um, okay, instead of going on Fashion Nova, like I'm gonna go on this black owned business and buy a shirt. I'm going to um, get my, my kids school supplies for next year from a black owned business rather than going to Staples or Walmart or, or where we usually go. And so social media makes those things a little bit more accessible. And a part of making systemic change is that economic piece. So when we buy from black owned businesses, we expand the amount of money that is circulating in the black community. Um, 
So those are just things that I wanted to share from our, our session, but we have time for one to two more people to come up mute and share what was going on in their groups. I can share quickly. Um, so one of the things that we talked about is um, someone else mentioned making sure that you're consistently to like not fall, even if you think, like you said about improving, being better the next day, but making sure that you don't fall into that kind of like trap that social media can not e easily set up of just like letting it fall into the trend and letting yourself fall into the performative activism category, even if that's not your intention. So like making sure that you're like, fact checking like things that you're posting, mm -hmm. verifying the things you're posting, and then also making sure that you're not just reposting things, but you're also using the resources that you repost. Like you're using the black owned businesses that you're reposting, or you're using those, um, like call this Senator to like demand justice here. Like use those emails, like make sure you're actually using the resources that you are preaching and posting about to make sure that you don't get sucked into that same, like, I'm just going to keep clicking and clicking so that people see this on my story, but to make sure you're actually doing something with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, so one, anybody else have anything to add? Okay. So I will respect I can, I just, I just add one thing um, yes. uh, that kind of made me think about um, like, you know, the email, you know, so-and-so, um, you know, based off of these posts and um, something I want to like, shout out that you know i feel like didn't get enough credit was the people who went through the effort of you know typing out an email saying like my name is blank like i demand justice for blank 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 and like you know all you have to do is just put in your email and like it just automatically sends it over and i found that i did so many of those just because it's it was so easy to just you know i am jay i am from you know westchester new york like, and I want this, this, and this, which, you know, is just, all I have to do is just write my name. And it was just so accessible. And, you know, I think without social media, that wouldn't have been possible. And, you know, a lot of that change might not have happened. So just shout out to the genius that made all those, you know, really helpful links. Absolutely. And the link in the bio is one of those emails that Black on Black Education created to send to your schools, your kids' schools. Um, and asking them what is it and what is their plan and what are they going to be doing in this coming school year. We also have one for public officials. So if anybody is interested in that, you can click on that link and it will take you to the two different options that we created for folks. So thanks for shouting that out, Jay. Jay. Um, and Dondre, it looked, sounded like you were trying to say something. Yeah, um, I wanted, one, one, one of um, the participants for our breakout room, um, I think two of them are overseas. So what they mentioned was that social media was kind of the primary when it came to um, activism, which I think a lot of us um, don't think when it comes to this type of um, conversation, how it's not just in the States, but also people outside from it who are trying to do activism. So in a sense, um, I don't want to call any names, but she mentioned that social media was one of her ways to allow these conversations to be made um, outside of her immediate family and also for people that she didn't know, she did like sharing that information around um, to create that type of change. I think a lot of times, a lot of us could probably think that social media might have um, effects that probably won't do too much if we like post information, but it does. But not a lot of people that have like that information that going around the social media and such. Um, that's what I was gonna say, just a comment. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for adding that. Um, and so we're gonna hop into our last breakout group. Um, and we're gonna talk about, similarly to the last one, the steps that we can take to transform provocative, that wasn't a word. Um, <laughs> we can change and transform performative activism into a more active form of activism. So I've said active a whole bunch of times in one sentence, but how can we take the things that are happening on social media and push them forward, make them like, I think we talked, we started talking about it just now, but how do we take what it is that is happening right now on social media and on media in general? And how do we move that from where we currently are and what, and what social media currently does and the part it plays in the, in the movement, push it into a more active form of creating the sort of changes in the world that we want to see. And so, um, 
I'm gonna send you back into those breakout groups for 10 more minutes. We left open space um, toward the end of the event to really talk about whatever it is that we wanna talk about in the end and ask questions and things like that. So uh, those breakout rooms are coming. And then again, I am going to ask you to talk in the full three. Yeah, we are, we are in our last 11 minutes of the fourth anti-racism event. Um, and so we wanna use the next five minutes for people to have the opportunity to talk about like, what are we gonna be doing? How are we gonna be transforming um, our activism from performative or performative solely into, into active work in, in the real world? I just want to butt in. Um, I don't want, you know, I talked first last time. I feel like I'm talking too much. Um, but I think a key word that you said there right at the end, I wasn't planning on talking, but you saying that, you know, how do we make performative act activism solely? I think that solely is such a big part of, you know, the, the movements that are going on and, you know, how you can be anti racist is, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, being performative. Uh, being a performative activist like you know you can post all you want and you know but i think on top of that you can do more and you know you can be like uh like more of an activist and, you know support things more than just on the surface absolutely thank you for sharing that um anybody else have anything to add what happened in in, in the last set of groups Um, we talked about joining um, any sort of group in your community, um, whether it's like a community council that you can be a part of, or if you're a teacher, um, joining like the school improvement team um, and just inserting yourself into the conversations to hold them and yourself accountable to make sure that they're addressing these issues, um, seeing how they're, wh where are they getting their information from? Um, are they actually pulling from, um, the population of those who are um, oppressed or are they just white people saying hey this is how you are, are diverse um, and just and you sending that link about like here are letters you can send to your school um, kind of got me thinking like I know my district is doing a diversity initiative this year um, so I'm thinking that I can take a critical look at what they're actually doing and holding them accountable, making sure it's not just them being like, oh, hey, look, we're doing this, um, but rather seeing that it's actually um, making change, so. Absolutely, thank you for sharing. Um, I think that that's super important and a great way that we can take all the things that we're learning from social media, because I think it's, to me, social media is a, ble a blessing and a curse at the same exact time. Like you learn so much, there is so much and it's accessible and it's not in this big, thick, heavy book that like only has letters in it. And you're like, oh my gosh. Um, it's, it's not easy at all to sit through an entire book and read the whole thing. And like, we don't have intention spans anymore. And so social media is really giving us like bite-sized accessible pieces of information that we can use in our everyday lives. But then there's the other side of it where we think that, okay, I, now I know this information. I think the worst thing that we can do is know information and not use it. Um, and so we try to make these events, we specifically try to curate them to have it be something that is not only conversational, but also like making a call to action for the future, asking you questions that are gonna make you think um, so that as you move into the real world outside of this perfectly nice and cozy Zoom call, um, we're, we're still doing the things that we say that we wanna do. Um, and I know that we're all gonna be doing it because I, I'm seeing the same faces keep coming back. I appreciate you so much. Um, so is there anything else that people wanna share before we kind of move into questions? If anybody has questions for me, um, I am more than happy to answer them. Um, one thing that uh, was touched on in our group that I think is important actually comes from something that you said when you jumped in about um, uh, freedom being tangible to a lot of people. And that's what people think that it is, but it actually isn't in a lot of regards. That when we propose things to our institutions, whether it is the curriculum at schools that we work for or um, 
our colleges that we that we attend as students that when we call them out for their performative activism and ask them what they're doing we counter with tangible change in our um i guess in our rebuttal to their performative activism so having them say okay well we actually can't do x y and z we can do this instead it becomes more of a conversation of saying this is what we need from you rather than saying you know obviously this was wrong with what your statement is this is what you can do to improve it this is what needs to be done in order to fix the system that's going on within this school college etc so i think um petitions specifically or just you know having conversations with your peers your coworkers when you come to them with something actually tangible that they can fix and change um, more people are actually able to pick up on that and run with it even if they um, build upon it to make it even bigger, or just like take it for what it is. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, specifically on college campuses, um, there is a history and a legacy of activism on college campuses. So I think that is super important, regardless of if it's online or not. Um, I had the beauty and the pleasure to spend the first uh, couple of weeks of 2020 in Cape Town, South Africa, where I spoke and sat with people who ran the Roads Must Fall and the Fees Must Fall movements. Um, they laid down in the chancellor's office every single day. Like it, it was like laid there. He had to step over human beings to get to his office. Like that is the sort of, like there's that, and then there's the petitions online, and then there is the sit-ins in, in the square. Like there's so many different things that come together to make something change. The Voting Rights Act of, uh, of 1965 did not happen. Um, because like Martin Luther King said, we need this. It was him, it was John Lewis, uh, rest in peace. It was like, it was all of these people collectively saying and doing things in different regards. It was some people on freedom buses, it was some people um, in the church, it was some people talking to the people at the schools, people making sure that folks can vote and, and being safe, the Black Panthers, making sure that they were armed and ready to be ready for whatever was coming next. And so it's so many th different things that happen all in tandem with one another that make um, the sorts of changes that we wanna see. I am not asking anybody to have arms like against the police because they've been bugging out today. I don't know what's going on. Um, and and so like definitely not saying that, but there's just so many different things that we can be doing. Um, and so again, I am thanking you for being here. We have three minutes left. If anybody has a question before we close, I am more than willing to answer that. Um, and then we're just gonna let you know a little announcements of things that Black on Black Education is doing that we would love for you to be a part of um, as we finish our last three minutes. Any questions? Give it 10 seconds to marinate. And I'm respecting the silence. Um, yes, so the Black Education Conference is next weekend. If you're an educator or about to be an educator or was an educator um, or is a parent or works in some capacity with students, um, the Black Education Conference is next weekend. We're hosting it on Hopin, which is another site similar to Zoom, but like specifically for conferences. Um, we have 18 presenters and speakers and panelists. Uh, we are talking everything Black education, how we walk into um, next school year and beyond thinking and actively working to make sure that Black students are getting their needs met. Um, if you do want to attend, it's not free, but if you want to use this coupon code, you can get 30% off of a ticket. And yes, so Black Education Conference is next weekend and we can't wait to see some of you there. Um, there was something else that we had here. I want to thank, oh, do you want a t-shirt? So anyone who's wearing a t-shirt, I didn't have mine right now because I'm like traveling, but yes, Jade, yes, Kayla, whoa, repping Black on Black Education. So if you want a t-shirt, you want to rep Black on Black Education, you can shop that link right there. And then I want to thank my team who is on here right now. I could not do any of these things without you. My dad was handling a 
Instagram live that we're happening, but we're having right now. But Kayla, thank you so much. Kayla and Jennifer are a part of our social media team. Jade and Julia are a part of our research team. And again, this would not be happening if I didn't have your support. So thank you so much. Dondre, we love you. I don't know what happened with the slide, but we love you, Dondre. So good. We love you. Um, and then if we have any other information, comments, questions, something comes up for you later, that is my email. It's eva at black black education com. My ins oh, our Instagram at black on black education, Twitter. No, our Instagram is at black on black ed. And our Twitter is also at black on black ed. So please reach out to us there, share our events, come next time. And I know that a bunch of you talked about um, needing help and needing support, <laughs> um, needing support with um, calling out racism, talking to family members. It's not easy. So that will be our next session. Um, thank you so much. Have a great night. Enjoy. Good night. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Eva. Thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye, Erin. <laughs> thank you, all Black on Black team. <laughs> Bye, everybody.